next I'd like to combine two questions. Uh, we have one person who asks uh, perceptively, uh, what guidelines would you suggest for using images of Jesus in liturgical worship? So that- um, very Images important. as in as in visual images? Yes, that's right. Yeah, and okay. then there is another question here um, about how we characterize the Lord. Uh, some tension between those characterizing the warrior Jesus versus those emphasizing the loving kindness of Jesus. And so it, as I read these two questions, I thought, now there's a powerful force field um, to, uh, to invite you into. Perhaps we should yes. do an entire session just on that, wow. on the visual wow. depictions of Jesus. Yes, yes. The, the visual depictions of Jesus it's a very tricky one, and it happens if people make television programs um, where, where you get actors portraying Jesus. Um, it's very difficult to do well, um, and I think, I think sometimes the most powerful portrayals of Jesus I've seen are when you've got a scene portrayed, but we're looking from behind so that we see the back of Jesus' head rather than any particular face, because the face will draw attention to itself in other ways. Uh, unless it's drawn in such a way that it's obviously nowhere near a photographic reproduction. And there are ways in all kinds of modern art where, where people have done that, where it's clearly like an icon, this is not meant to be a photograph. It's something which tells us something, but you, you pass through it rather than looking at it. That's a very delicate and difficult one, um, but, but uh, it, it can be done, like it can be done well on stage. But I think I've seen many productions um, both um, on stage and in, on television or in film with Jesus. And one of the most powerful moments, I think, was when um, a, a one stage play when Mary Magdalene met the risen Jesus. And the risen Jesus was just off stage, but there was a gentle light flowing. And Mary Magdalene's reaction to this figure she was seeing was actually far more powerful for us in the audience than any Jesus just strolling on and there he was. Though, you know, all sorts of questions raised by that, of course. Morphing into the second question, I am really worried about the whole warrior Jesus or warrior God image. Um, when you read the Gospels, when you read Paul, when you read the book of Revelation, the lion is also the lamb. The wrath of God is the wrath of the lamb. That's a deep paradox. And there is a reason why in the messianic prophecies in say Isaiah 9 and Isaiah 11, um, the, 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 the boot of the trampling warrior and the garments rolled in blood are all gonna be burned in the fire. We're not doing that stuff anymore. For to us a child is born, for our, to us a son is given. And in Isaiah 11, these wild animals will come together in peace and a little child shall lead them. The minute we step away from that image, we are in very dangerous territory, uh, in territory, of course, which the church has often slid back into again and again, that because we know the gospel and those ones over there don't, um, you know, then we're gonna go and fight them and show them they're, they're wrong. And of course, fighting already is showing that we're doing it wrong. Um, this, this is not to address the very difficult issues of how in geopolitics, um, many Christians do embrace pacifism, many don't. That's not the same as saying we have a warrior Jesus or a warrior God. Uh, I'm, I'm very, very disturbed by those ideas um, because it seems to me again and again, Jesus is warning his contemporaries against that flight into violence, which as we know, was the means of uh, Jerusalem being destroyed in, in AD 70. And Jesus says in Luke 19, um, he's weeping because he says, you're resisting the way of peace. Yeah. Your enemies are therefore going to come and, and, and destroy you. Um, and the way of peace which Jesus is teaching, the minute we step away from that, we are on very dangerous territory.